Look at verse 16. And Abraham listened to Ephron, and Abraham weighed out the silver for Ephron, which he had named in the hearing of the sons of Heth, 400 shekels of silver currency uh, of the merchants. Again, remember, this is taking place in the city gates in front of a bunch of witnesses. Uh, and I'm sure this was shocking to everyone that's there. I'm sure the people that are watching this transaction are saying, what, what is he doing? What's happening? Why didn't he counteroffer like he's supposed to? Does any, do you think we should say something to him? Does he not know? Now, why did Abraham pay the 400 shekels of silver and not negotiate the price? We don't know. We don't know. It doesn't tell us. You know, this does remind me, though, of this, uh, 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 the story in the Gospel of John where Mary poured the very expensive bottle of perfume on Jesus' feet and anointed Jesus with this expensive perfume, and the disciples complained that she wasted this expensive perfume, and Jesus rebuked the disciples, saying, leave her alone, she did this for my burial. And she did the, Mary did this as an act of worship because she understood Jesus was going to die for the sins of the world on the cross. The disciples didn't understand that, but, G, but Mary did. To them, to the disciples, it was just a big waste of money. But not to Mary. It was an act of worship. For Abraham here, he understood that God was going to give his descendants all of the land. The Hittites didn't know that. Abraham knew that. That all of that land would belong to his family one day. And so maybe Abraham thought, hey, all, all this land's going to be mine one day. 400 shekels of silver, that's a bargain. You know, I don't know. So what he does here is he buys this family sepulcher in the land, the cave of Machpelah, and he buys it on faith. It's a family sepulcher. It's not just for his wife, Sarah. It's for his whole family, for generations that will be buried in that cave. And this is kind of like when he planted the tamarisk trees for the future generations to enjoy the shade of those trees. He buys this burial cave on faith in the promised land. And, and here's the thing. Here's the thing. That burial cave of Machpelah, that field that he ends up buying, this is the first and only piece of real estate that Abraham owned in the promised land. This, this is the first foothold in the promised land. He's been living there for decades. But he doesn't own anything. God has promised to give him all the land, but he doesn't, he doesn't own a square foot of it. Now he's able to buy a small field there, the field, the cave of Mach, Machpelah. And, and this is the first little foothold in the land, the first piece that fulfills the promise that God made. And that's why this story is recorded for us in chapter 23 to show us how Abraham first acquired land in Canaan. And as I said, this was the only piece of real estate Abraham ever owned in the land. And this little piece of land, it becomes significant in Israel's history. It's like the first, you know, the, the first little beachhead in the land, the first piece of property that, that God's people owned, the first piece of the fulfillment of it. Uh, when the 12 spies go in to spy out the land, they're in the land for 40 days. We're told they go to Hebron. They go there. When David becomes king, for seven years he's king, he rules from Hebron. And where David built his palace in Hebron, he built it on a high mountain overlooking the cave of Machpelah. Because that's the first piece of land that, that these people owned, that the children of Israel possessed, that the descendants of Abraham possessed. That's why it's significant. So it goes on to tell us in verse 17. So the field of Ephron, which was in Machpelah, which was before Mamre, the field and the cave, which was in it, and all the trees that were in the field... Uh, we have uh, you know, receipts of sale of property from that time where they would list out how many trees are on the piece of property, any big features on the property, 
And so that's how it's listed here. The field, the cave, all the trees that were in the field that were within, all the surrounding borders, it was all deeded to Abraham. And for the first time now, Abraham owns a piece of the promise. It's all, it's all been on faith up to now, just these, this promise of God and God's word. Now he's got a little piece of it. Now he's got a little piece of that promise fulfilled. To Abraham as a possession in the presence of the sons of Heth before all who went into the gate of the city. And after this, Abraham buried Sarah, his wife, in the cave of the field of Machpelah before Mamre, that is Hebron, in the land of Canaan. And so the field and the cave that is in it were deeded legally. It's his property now to Abraham by the sons of Heth as property for a burial place. You know, 400 years ago this month, the pilgrims landed at Plymouth, Massachusetts, seeking religious freedom, wanting to worship God freely and live according to the scriptures. And they established a small little colony there at at Plymouth. And they adopted something called the Mayflower Compact to govern their, the people. And, and the Mayflower Compact became kind of the foundation in many ways to the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution. And there are some people who say that our nation was really founded at Plymouth by the pilgrims, that that's where it really all began. Machpila is where Abraham gained ownership, possession of the promises of God where he gained ownership and possession of a piece of the promised land. Now, he knew one day, one day, God was going to give all of it to his, his family as an inheritance.